Hello, everyone. Welcome to this session, Time to Scale Digital Engagement While Improving ROI. My name is Andres Marquez, and I lead the digital marketing portfolio here at Don and Brad Street. And I'm happy and honored to be the opening act of Ashley, if you will. We just had an amazing panel led by our CMO, Stacey Greiner, uh, where she and some amazing guests cover how to build account-based experiences for a cookieless world. So if you miss that, you will be able to watch the recording at the end of the day. Uh, before we get started though, I would like to quickly cover some housekeeping. Um, so we will run for about 20 minutes or so, and then we'll have some time for Q&A at the end. So please submit your comments and questions here in the chat bar. Uh, during today's presentation, I will cover some sales and marketing trends. And then Ashley will talk through how she and her team at Zero Wireless uh, have created an account-based foundation to accelerate results, uh, scale digital engagement, and automated the process with high precision, which ultimately led Zero Wireless to increase their ROI. So before I turn it over to Ashley, though, I would like to start with some context and talk through these major trends. So first, uh, it's privacy and B2B buyers, as we all know, have gone digital and they are looking for more control over their own privacy. And as we head towards a cookless world, collecting and managing first party data and customers' privacy and preference is now a top priority. Now, the flip side of privacy is personalization. So while buyers don't want digital noise, they still want to uh, make their buying journey personalized and efficient. And finally, we have proliferation of tools. So in our race to reach buyers and more and more channels, uh, marketing and sales teams are managing an overwhelming number of tools. In fact, around 60% of Google marketing teams are using more than 20 different tools right now. So for those reasons, businesses that want to keep up with the pace of transformation uh, recognize that their marketing and sales teams must be aligning goals and execution. And uh, the truth is that they're becoming not just aligned, but unified as one whole team. And that means that they'll also need to align their data and technology to keep them meet with their goals. So here at John and Broad Street, we are on a mission to empower sales and marketing teams with the data, the insights, and the automation they need to deliver growth. And uh, part of what Ashley is about to cover starts with the importance of leveraging the right data and insights to learn about their customers and prospects, uh, finding the right segments that are most likely to convert, and activating targeted and engaging campaigns across channels which ultimately will bring more pipeline and close one opportunities for the business. So with that, I'm gonna stop talking and I'm gonna turn it over to you, Ashley. So thanks, Andres, for the great introduction. Um, today, I am gonna to talk to you about how we were able to scale our digital engagement while improving ROI, um, really with an investment in some uh, rev tech over the past year. So a little bit about me before I jump in. I am a Senior Director of Marketing at Sierra Wireless. I have a diverse career um, from spinning off a startup to working for a Fortune 100. I've worked in tech, biotech, consulting, and publishing. And I've lived on three continents and I'm in Dubai now. I have expertise in data, strategy, tech, and creative that gives me a unique lens to help organizations drive revenue and optimize their ROI. So Sierra Wireless is a leader in uh, device to cloud solutions for the IoT. We provide an integrated IoT solution with end-to-end -end security so that an organization can connect their thing out in the field, whether that's a vehicle, a smart meter, a utility grid, or a piece of industrial equipment to their back office. And so what was the driver for this RevTech expansion? So our marketing department is uh, you know, very data-driven. Um, we set uh, goals from a demand gen perspective that are all around pipeline. Um, we've just started to set objectives also around revenue. So we'll start uh, tracking to those uh, as well. 
But the biggest driver for this RevTech expansion was to drive our objectives around 25% of pipeline coming from marketing and 20x pipe ROI. So for every dollar we spend, we have to get 20 back in pipeline. And we've been doing really, really well around the goal of 25% um, of pipeline from marketing. When I started uh, with the organization, we were at 3%. And in 2019 and 2020, we've increased that to 22%. Um, but we're seeing the last two years are flat. So we needed something to enable us to make another jump. And we saw that we could optimize both our brand or our broad and ABM campaigns uh, using this technology. Our broad campaigns, they're still, you know, segment and product based. Um, we get the majority of our pipeline and revenue from these. And we've been optimizing along the funnel, working with serious decisions for a number of years, but we were seeing, again, diminishing returns. Um, so we needed more intelligence. We wanted to bring in intent data. We knew we needed better segmentation, uh, et cetera. And then also lead aging, aging challenges. I think this is the, the favorite conversation that every marketing and salesperson have. Marketing generates a lead. They think it's great. It has a good score. Uh, you go into the CRM to look at what sales has done with that. And you know sometimes they haven't even opened the lead. Um, you have a conversation, they're like, well, it wasn't a very good lead, or I have so many leads, I need help prioritizing. And so that's where we were at. We were optimizing uh, the scoring, um, but we were really up against the limits of that matrix-based scoring that we had in our um, existing technology. So we wanted to implement predictive as a way to get beyond that. And then of course, on the ABM side, there's the promise of bigger deals, secure relationships, higher lifetime value, and overall improving marketing and sales ROI. But this is begging for technology. I mean, we, we did this manually, so we know um, just how painful it was. Um, but you need to be able to identify the accounts most likely to buy, you know, looking at intent, you know, what tech do they have install, installed, scoring, et cetera. And then to actually activate against those accounts and focus your marketing spend and sales activity on them. And then to be able to uh, report back on all of that and test and learn um, and optimize what you're doing from an ABM perspective. Um, for those of you who are starting out in ABM, I just wanted to put this slide in because um, there's a lot of preparation that needs to go into account-based marketing. I think this is, it seems like obvious stuff, but it, it took us a lot longer than we had expected. Um, you know, educating the organization on what you want to do, agreeing with the organization on a definition for ABM. Is this going to be, you know, you take your top 10 accounts and you focus on those accounts, or is this going to be you know, on the scale of 50 or 100 accounts in a specific sub-segment, agreeing on roles and responsibilities in the process. So I spent a lot of time, you know, working out process flows and where is everyone going to get involved at different points. And then doing an ABM readiness matrix. So, you know, ABM is a hot topic. Um, a lot of people want to, you know, get in there and get this going, do it, but it's not always, um, they're not always ready. So is there content that we can use? Do we really understand the buyer's journey? Are there salespeople assigned for a specific segment, et cetera? Agreeing on how much budget you're gonna spend on this kind of experimental marketing versus your you know, tried and true, um, that, that needs to also be agreed. And then building the target account list, which we expected uh, to be rather simple, but you know, a lot of people have an opinion about this, especially, you know, in sales and product, and, and rightfully so, right? This is where we're going to spend our marketing dollars. But, um, you know, we have a lot of people involved, and we were also using a lot of disparate tools. So that part has certainly improved with some of the technology um, and with actually agreeing on roles and responsibilities. But there was a lot of prep that went into kind of setting the, the stage for, uh, for the ABM campaigns that we ran. So I'll talk through a couple of manual pilots and then I'll go through, you know, what were the results when we actually automated. Uh, this first campaign was a brand campaign, uh, specifically start with Sierra was the message. Uh, what we did here is, you know, traditionally you might go as big and broad as you can with a brand campaign. We just didn't have the luxury of the budget needed to support a big campaign. Um, so what we decided to do was to define a target list and activate against that list. We had six different segments, including utilities, uh, transportation, um, energy, et cetera. 
And we also layered in manually some Bombora data. Um, so this was a number of years ago, you know, we, we took that data, we uh, found additional accounts with intent, and we also layered in and prioritized our own accounts uh, with intent. Then we did some display acquisition and retargeting and video using, at the time, Drawbridge, LinkedIn, and Google. Um, and we were pretty impressed with the results, actually. So we got 27% engagement with our target accounts. This means 27% of accounts you know, clicked an ad, watched a video, came back to our website, or downloaded some content. Um, and we had a 64% increase in brand awareness in the exposed group. Um, and this was based on a Nielsen survey. And finally, even though this was a brand campaign, we actually got 24X pipeline ROI. So we got 24X back. Um, so we were really impressed with those results. And the most significant learning is really you can still have a very successful brand campaign that that actually meets your overall objectives um, with significant waste reduction. The next pilot was really a demand-based pilot. We uh, decided to partner with one specific uh, sales director and target 60 accounts in his territory. Um, we did two different kinds of direct mail, um, one which was a dimensional mailer, a set of binoculars, and the other one was a video mailer that um, we actually had the, the sales rep record a customized and personalized message um, to those prospects. And then we did some content syndication um, and then the inside sales uh, outreach. The results, we, we didn't hit our, our ROI target, however, we did get 7x. Um, and we still generated 750,000 in pipe for the territory. So the, the sales director was still quite happy with that. Um, and we did meet our account engagement objective. But the biggest learning actually was around velocity. So prior to this campaign, it was taking inside sales about three months to reach a decision maker in these accounts. And when we combine, especially the direct mail, with the inside sales reach out, it actually decreased down to three weeks. So we were able to uh, get into those accounts a lot more quickly, which means you can generate opportunities more quickly and ultimately revenue more quickly. But both of these were extremely manual and we needed to scale. So I'm gonna talk now about how the RevTech is enabling us to scale and improve our ROI. Uh, first of all, you know, I mentioned sales and, and product marketing identifying accounts. Sometimes this was as simple as Google. Uh, so now we're able to layer in intent, tech installed, and other segmentation variables, which means that we're spending our marketing dollars and our sales effort on our best bet accounts. And we were honestly segmenting on some dirty data. And we had uh, data from form fills, events, from sales, et cetera, in our CRM and our marketing automation tool. And, and now we're able to augment that data, segment on that augmented and much more clean data, <clears throat> which is able, enabling us to improve our personalization and also our match rates. And I'll talk more about that later. And we were doing manual list generation as I talked about. Now I say it's semi-automated. So lists are refreshed based on attributes in, in Lattice DMB. Um, but when we do a new campaign, we do still have to have some manual uh, work at the front. We were also manually activating accounts in digital channels. So we were, had our Excel sheets of accounts with, you know, contacts and email addresses, et cetera, and, um, and website URLs. And we were putting those into um, the various different tools. And now we can send those lattice lists either um, directly or via Terminus. We were also, I mean, fundamentally in, in ABM, you need to be able to look at all the leads and contacts in an account, see all the activities that are going on. And we were also doing this manually, um, you know, using Excel and some reporting and Salesforce, et cetera. Um, and now we're able to actually link all of those uh, leads to accounts in uh, the CDP. And then we use Terminus to highlight that connection within Salesforce so that the sales reps can actually see all of that activity and all the leads and contacts. We were also manually getting sales to engage. 
So we were, you know, seeing multiple leads come in in a particular account and we would say to sales, oh, did you see these came in and kind of, you know, direct them to follow up with an account. Um, and now we have the predictive account score, we have intent and we have tech data in Salesforce so that the sales people are enabled to go in there and see what's happening in real time. And finally, we are manually measuring everything. And now we have uh, automated measurement and marketing influence. So of course, when you're doing uh, an ABM campaign, it's likely an account that you've known about for a while, you've got contacts, you've got leads in there. And you know, part of the role of marketing in, in there is to actually just activate those, those leads and accounts and, or leads and contacts again. And so you might not get credit um, for generating that account or that, that lead. Um, and so now we're able to measure, okay, what is the actual influence um, that marketing is having on those particular accounts, on those opportunities in those accounts. So this is an example of an automated uh, campaign that we did. Uh, we took 130 air compressor manufacturers and we activated through those lattice segments uh, through Terminus Display Advertising, LinkedIn, email, and third-party publications. Uh, and the results, I mean, we hit 10x uh, pipe ROI versus 20x if you only look at generated. And now that we were able to measure influence, we could see that it was actually 38x, um, so exceeding that target. And importantly, we already have 1.4 million in revenue um, from this campaign, and we exceeded our account engagement goal. So, so results from automation overall. Um, the first two are what I just talked about. So 43% lift in pipe ROI, 113% lift in pipeline. The next ones I'll talk about are from both our broad slash segment-based campaigns and our ABM. Um, surprisingly, we saw a really, really remarkable lift in email click-through rate. And I say surprisingly because you know, we didn't set out to necessarily, you know, see a lift like that. We thought, okay, yes, bringing this data, of course, is going to get better engagement, but this was, you know, quite impressive to us. And a doubling in form submissions from email. So this is, uh, you know, real leads that are getting activated and getting into our funnel um, for sales to follow up with. And then finally, a 375% lift in Google click-through rate. So taking what we thought was already a, a good solid click-through rate at 12.6% and increasing that to 60% by layering in the data that's made available uh, in DMV. So, you know, putting in intent data, tech, um, uh, advanced segmentation, we're, we're really uh, seeing some nice lift there. And then finally, the uh, conversion from lead slash account um, to one opportunity using those predictive scores, we're seeing great results there. So 3X lift for A-rated accounts and 6X for A-rated leads. And this is a little bit more detail on how that opportunity conversion and wins are correlated with score. So the left-hand side is accounts, the Y-axis is conversion rate with the gray bar um, being op creation and the red being opportunity win. And so you can see the A bucket has the highest conversion rate and win rate. And even in the B bucket, we're seeing some nice lift. Um, D is definitely the no-go zone. Um, so we're really comfortable, uh, you know, prioritizing our initiatives uh, based on these scores. Um, of course, there's always optimization that can be done to separate the A and the B more from the, the C, um, but that's something that we're, we're going to be optimizing on. And then the right hand side is one of our lead scores. And you can see that the leads with an A score dramatically outperform leads in the other buckets. So again, very confident with inside sales using these scores to prioritize um, where they're following up. And this is a little bit more on the match rate increases that we've seen. So within Lattice, we have 34 marketing campaigns configured. 10 of them are the ones that I mentioned where the lists are automatically updating um, and sending to Eloqua and Google each week with new intent targets. And then 24 are ad hoc, ad hoc uh, campaigns that we're supporting a webinar or another promotion. 
And you can see if we, this is an example of two different segments. So the first segment we started out in Lattice, we said, okay, we've got 21,000 folks in that segment and 86 in the other. When we put those into Google, um, you only get a 7% match rate. Um, however, when we're able to use the uh, customer match um, contact enrichments, um, we see the match rate go up to 19 and 15%. And then when we add in the device expansion, so automatic, automated cross-device targeting, we see that go up to 37 and 28%. Um, so just imagine there's so many more eyeballs on the message that you wanted to send originally, right? You, you started out with your initial segment, you know, without these, uh, these other customer matches, you would only be getting to 7% of them. So this is huge um, for getting your message out. So what's next? I mean, we've set a really nice foundation. Of course, there are things to do that we want to do on the score. Um, but in terms of digital activation, there are a number of activities coming up that we're really excited about. Um, the first is to make use more of uh, first party data uh, with respect to anonymous traffic. So if you're like most marketers, you know about 5% of your uh, website traffic converts. So you know about about 5%. And there's some junk in there, but there's a lot of really um, potentially interesting anonymous traffic that you know folks never raise their hand. Um, so what we're going to do is to create a high fit, high propensity uh, anonymous account segment and then build an always on brand campaign against those to try and get hand raisers. And then we also need to optimize the digital activation in Google. You know, we've got great uh, results on click through rate. We've got great results on match rate, but we really need to scale it. Um, and we also want to activate additional display campaigns, layering in uh, intent and fit um, into those segments. Then we want to continue testing LinkedIn. Honestly, LinkedIn has not been the best performing channel for us. It's quite expensive. It doesn't help us to reach our ROI targets. Um, but now that we've got, you know, all of this additional data that we can use to really fine tune our segments and then our message um, along with that, uh, we're going to try it again. So we're going to do some retargeting and also activate a nurture stream for high intent, high fit accounts where we don't have any known or engaged contacts. And then finally, you know, we bought two pieces of technology here. We bought uh, Lattice and Terminus and we really wanna drive cross-platform functionality by providing Terminus with Lattice identified accounts so we can leverage the, the advertising network there with all of the, the great data and segmentation we can get out of Lattice. And ultimately drive more pipeline, more revenue and ROI. And with that, I'll hand it back over to you, Andres. Thanks, Ashley. Uh, that was definitely a great story. And uh, before we go and cover a few questions, um, I wanted to invite everyone in the audience uh, to request a complimentary intent report. Uh, you'll just need to fill out a short form and our team will build a custom uh, report and provide a list of companies that are showing intent in your solutions. Uh, this is 100% free and it's 100% customized to your business. So definitely don't hesitate to take advantage of this offer. So let's take a few questions, Ashley, if you're fine with that. And uh, as you mentioned before, uh, you've gone through an amazing journey and have created a solid account-based foundation. But before scaling or starting to try new things, um, of course, across the process, uh, do you mind sharing what's like the biggest uh, challenge you face throughout this uh, process from going to manual to automation? Yeah, I mean, I think honestly that the technology implementation, of course, with any new technology that you're bringing in, you run into things, but you know, that wasn't the biggest hurdle. The biggest hurdle was around all the prep work um, that I mentioned, right? And we were doing that as we were kind of, um, you know, making a case to bring on this technology. And I would say that that was the hardest. So agreeing what it is and what it isn't, everyone has a definition of ABM. Um, so really get really clear on that so that uh, you're meeting expectations, right? For, for your internal customers. Um, and then the target account list creation, uh, you know, it was a little bit late in the process when we said, okay, we need to step back and we actually need to write out 
a whole process for this with roles and responsibilities. Um, so I think that's something that if I had to do it again, um, I would I would do that uh, more quickly in the process. So those those were the biggest challenges for us. Okay, sounds great. So intent is such a hot topic right now. And I think folks in the audience are curious to hear how are you leveraging intent within your current strategy? And also what's something uh, new that you would like to try it out with intent as well? Yeah, so we, I mean, we have been leveraging intent in, you know, all the channels that we possibly can. So, you know, I talked about it in email and what that's done for our, our click-through rates and our form conversion rates. We're using it in Google as uh, a bid modifier. We're actually creating segments and then sending those over to publications that we're advertising with. So we're, we're using it in a lot of channels here. Um, the most interesting thing that we want to do now is that anonymous segment that I talked about. That's been one that we haven't necessarily focused on off the top. We've looked a lot at more of the third party intent, um, but really leveraging that first party intent. Uh, we're really excited about that. And then also just enabling sales more. So, you know, I've educated sales on what intent data is, what does that actually mean? Um, how could you leverage that? But it's still something that we need to work on in terms of, you know, how they can use it in opening to a conversation, et cetera. And we've had some, some early uh, wins where, you know, some salespeople have actually utilized that to create some custom uh, messages back to, to leads and to, um, and, and to cold prospects. And they have seen some bites from that, but it's just getting sales more comfortable with how can you actually leverage all of this great information that we're providing to you. Okay, that's great. So we're running out of time, but before we wrap it up, uh, would you mind um, sharing some top lessons learned uh, through all this process as well? Yeah, no problem. Um, I think the, the first thing is that we, we probably expected ABM results to come a bit more quickly, um, but we're finding that you don't get them overnight. And I'm talking with other folks in other organizations. And for the most part, you know, they're saying you have to persevere and that's what we're experiencing as well. Um, and test and learn and really optimize your programs based on what the data is telling you. Um, and part of the reason also that you know, we're not going as quickly as we wanted to is it's a time of budget cuts, right? COVID hit um, and, you know, are tested and, and always on programs that are delivering pipeline, we're going to touch those. Uh, so we did have to cut back a little bit on the budget for ABM. So that slowed down our velocity a bit in terms of getting those results out of uh, ABM. Um, but what it forced us to do is actually really look at how do we use the data that we're getting out of Lattice um, in all of our programs, right? Which is what I talked about, right? We really have embraced the data that we can get for segmentation. We've embraced intent data, and that's showing some really nice results and optimizations um, on those broad slash segment based programs as well. So I think the lesson there is to really just, yeah, think, think creatively about how you can use these tools, not only from an ABM perspective, but to really optimize the rest of your programs as well. Okay, that's great. So Ashley, once again, thanks for sharing this amazing story with us today. And thanks everyone in the audience for joining us uh, today in this session. Uh, stay tuned because we have a uh, great session coming up where Zarina Stanford, uh, the CMO of Rackspace Technology, will go over four drivers to accelerate buyer engagement and growth. Uh, if you still have some questions, please comment on the chat and we'll reach uh, reach out back to you. Uh, so once again, thank you so much for joining us and talk to you all soon.